Well, obviously, um, my fitness routine has evolved tremendously since I no longer compete and since I've been getting uh, long in the tooth, as they say. Um, I guess today my main goal with most of my fitness is to have fun. So I, I pick activities that I can enjoy that I don't see as being exercise but as being fun and play and, and part of the other primal blueprint laws engage, using your brain and, and engaging in play versus moving, lifting heavy things or moving around a lot. Um, clearly I'm moving around a lot when I'm playing ultimate frisbee so I have an ultimate game once a week. That's also my sprint day because there's a lot of sprinting in that, in that uh, game. Uh, I stand up paddle twice a week now. Uh, again, it's fun. I'm out with manatees. I, I moved to Miami, so I'm, uh, instead of dolphins and whales, I have manatees and um, the occasional shark, but uh, not a big deal. And, um, uh, and then I, I walk a lot, and that's one of the things that changed in my life when I moved from Malibu, where I was really kind of housebound. I, I had to get in my car to do anything from Malibu. Uh, to Miami where I haven't had a car for a year and a half and I walk everywhere. Uh, not just on the streets, but I walk on the sand. Uh, and it's been uh, a tremendous uh, addition to my strategy of, of always being moving. Because I think that's the main, uh, my main goal is to, is to uh, defy aging by, by maintaining mobility and movement. So between uh, the, uh, the paddling uh, the frisbee, the walking, oh by the way I started doing um, e-foiling. Now e-foiling is on a surfboard, it's got a, a hydrofoil underneath and an electric motor and so you're up a foot and a half above the water and there's a lot of balance involved in that. So that's not just fun but you're actually using you know small uh, uh, muscles that are used in, in, in maintaining balance and adjustments and things like that. Sort of like the slack line which I did for a while. Now in the gym I like to do what I call a minimum effective dose of work. This is a Tim Ferriss term, but I've sort of co-opted it for my own life, which is what's the least amount of work I can do in the gym uh, and maintain strength. Uh, and also, um, it's all contemplated to not get injured when I'm doing the playing thing. So when I'm, when I'm having fun and I'm paddling or I'm playing frisbee or whatever, I, obviously I don't want to get injured. So the stuff that I do in the gym, Mostly body weight uh, activities, uh, push-ups, pull-ups, squats, lunges. I do hex bar deadlifts, uh, that sort of thing. They're all, again, contemplated to keep me kind of well balanced, uh, but not, they're not bodybuilding exercises or anything like that. They're just basically the least amount of work that I can do so that I can play and have more fun and more time playing. I'm, uh, I'm over this overtraining concept. There was a time in my life when I really had to dial back my training and sort of think about it purposefully like okay I'm training too much I'm overtraining. maybe I should train less uh, those thoughts have completely exited my brain now and I have no intention of overtraining. Uh, to me a 35 minute bike ride is a long ride um, I do have a fat tire bike I've got a you know four and a half inch wide fat bike that I ride up and down the sand um, in Miami and it's, uh, it's a great workout. It's very much akin to doing a 14 or 16 percent grade on a mountain bike. Um, it has a motor, right? No, it does not have a motor. Does not, my wife has one that has a motor uh, so she can keep up. But mine uh, mine's just a carbon fiber, beautiful, lightweight frame. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I do more than an hour in the heat, uh, that's, that's sort of on the border of overtraining for me. Uh, that'll leave me truly knackered at the end of that day, uh, so I can't string several of those days together, right? So, so again, the whole thing now is, is how can I be strong, lean, fit, happy, healthy with the least amount of work? So if I push it hard, um, I'm sure to take the next day either off or really easy. And there was a time when I thought, Oh, I would feel guilty because I took more than 12 hours off, you know, and, and uh, allowed myself more rest than I needed. Now, this whole rest thing has become um, almost a joke in my family. Like we, you know, we brag about how much sleep we get every night. Not how little sleep we get, but how much sleep we get. You know, I got eight and a half last night. Well, I got nine last night. So sleep is an important part of that recovery process. But also, you know, um, having an intuitive sense of when um, it's appropriate to go hard again. Um, and when it's not appropriate. And as you get older, you develop this, uh, this sense of like, well, you know, 
I really felt that workout today, so I know for a fact I shouldn't go for maybe hard for another two, two or three days. Um, and which is not to say that you can't go hard again later on that week, but for now, it's really about the high intensity without hurting yourself and finding those moments when you can throw a, few, a little high intensity activity in. I'll give you an example. I have uh, two great games of Ultimate in Miami. There's one on Sunday and one on Monday. I can't play them both because I can't, I can't recover in time. I'd love to play them both, and I could play them both, but I'm smart enough to know that I can't recover uh, from one to the next in that, in that uh, 24 hour period of time. Yeah, so now I'm, tr now I'm trying to um, achieve um, greater balance because balance is, is a risk factor for uh, morbid morbidity for people over 65. Um, I'm certainly trying to um, improve my range of motion because I think uh, mobility is, is one of the definers of a quality lifestyle. So, you know, access to thoughts and the ability to move through this world are the two um, things that are requirements for living an awesome life when you're older. You know, you want to have access to your memories and faculties and be able to think and, and, and converse and interact with people and you want to be able to go places and, and, and have access to things, whether that's traveling, whether that's working out, whether that's uh, spending time with, your, time with your grandchildren. So mobility um, is sort of my main focus right now and I noticed that over the years I've become more contracted, you know, my my uh, range of motion has diminished, so a lot of what I'm doing right now is contemplated to, to, to opening that up, particularly in shoulders and hips, hip flexors and things like that. Well, the, the explosiveness, the dynamic aspect of mobility uh, comes with a little bit of a risk factor as you get older because you've got um, you know, tendons and ligaments that have um, been, you know, be, become a little bit more brittle with time. Uh, that's, uh, I guess, an artifact of aging. One of the ways I try to counteract that is by taking uh, uh, collagen supplements. So I take 20 to 40 grams of collagen a day. Um, and I try to maintain good muscle pliability so all of the muscles are connected to the tendons. Uh, and if I'm going to um, get myself in a position where I'm going to be explosive, I, I don't want to snap my Achilles, for instance. Um, a lot of that has to do with the, the pliability of my, of my calf muscles. So there's a, a, a real subtle interplay between the musculature and the connective tissue that I think is uh, important to pay attention to and to maintain over time. So I get, for instance, uh, I get body work done once a week uh, on uh, with um, Hypervolt and uh, some of the, the new uh, tech equipment to try and keep the fascia loose and pliable and, and uh, break up adhesions and dysfunction in my muscles so that my tendons and ligaments don't get affected by that. You know, we're seeing in a lot of the pro athletes right now um, horrible injuries that uh, are, in my estimation, a result of muscular imbalances, not, not necessarily the weakness of the tendon or the ligament, but, but at some point if you haven't fixed the muscle imbalance, then all of the um, strain goes to the tendon and it, and it snaps. So that's one of the um, sort of things I keep top of mind when I'm trying to exercise in a way that prevents injury is how do I maintain the mobility of the, of the muscles that are connected to the tendons so that I don't have those issues. Well, yeah, I think the three things are probably uh, find more opportunities to walk. Walking is still... Move to Miami. Uh, what, that moving to Miami would be a, one idea. Uh, but, you know, when I go to New York City, I'm, I'm just always impressed by how much walking people do and how, much, how, how they're into it and they like it and they enjoy it and it's not a, it's not a chore for them. Uh, so find ways in which to move throughout the day, which includes mostly uh, walking. I think um, number two would be uh, to engage in these archetypal rest postures, which would be finding ways to kneel, side sit, uh, cross-legged, squat, um, not just for a little bit of time, but, but throughout the day. And, and if you can only hold a position for like 30 seconds, that's fine. That's your body telling you just switch to another position. But these are ways in which you can move that connective tissue um, and improve um, that mobility. And then the other way is to, um, um, I, I think the, probably the number one 
exercise that I would have people do is a hex bar deadlift. If you could pick one exercise that was going to have the greatest impact over 65, it would be this hex bar deadlift. It's not just in terms of uh, you know, pure strength and, and, and hip flexors, but it's, it's major muscles that it's working on. So it's, uh, it's your uh, glutes and your quads and your hamstrings and uh, all, of, all of the leg muscles, but it's also pulling on your shoulder muscles. So you, there's, there's, a, there's an aspect to that. And as a result of that, it's loading up your entire spine. So when we talk about doing these hex bar deadlifts, we're also talking about not just muscle strength and mobility, but we're also talking about uh, bone density. And that's one of the issues that so many people who are getting older have. They don't do enough weight-bearing activity that improves bone density. So those are my three go-to activities for today.